What's up, guys? I'm Nikki. I'm Bella. And this is the Out of Our Minds Podcast. A playground for mystics and self-explorers to journey through the vast realms of the universe, cultural landscapes, and spiritual expansion. Join us weekly as we dive into thought-provoking discussions that unveil the mysteries of existence and nurture the growth of our consciousness. Hey guys, and welcome back in to the Out of Our Minds podcast. This is Nikki here, and you're about to listen to episode two, which I am so freaking excited about this episode because this is not just an episode on alcohol and sobriety and how amazing it is to not drink alcohol. No, no, no. We're going to get real raw and honest about our personal journeys with alcohol. I know me personally, I have ebbed and flowed with my journey of taking breaks from alcohol. So you'll hear on this episode, my real and raw story about what really happened in my life when I started to reintroduce alcohol back into my life and what I am choosing to do today. Bella is also going to share some beautiful stories about how she persisted in her life through the discomfort of removing alcohol and was actually able to manifest some really cool things into her life because of that. We talk all about stress levels and how that will actually impact the way that you are attracted to alcohol and really alcohol's place in our journey once we are starting to turn inwards and do this work of spiritual evolution and personal discovery. So if you're someone who's curious about what alcohol is doing to your life and starting to get curious about what could happen if you did experiment with removing it, this is the perfect episode for you to listen to because you're going to get a little drop in some insight into what has happened in our own lives and our own journeys with experimenting with more of a mindful consumption approach. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. What's up, guys? Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. Episode number two of Out of Your Mind, Out of Our Minds podcast. Doesn't even know the podcast name. Yeah. Um, hello, this is Nikki and Bella again. And we are really excited because today's conversation is one that has been very close to, I was going to say our hearts, but it's more just like we've been thinking about it a lot. We've been kind of both had our own journey through the world of consumption specifically with alcohol now before people are like oh my god another conversation about how being sober is like the best thing ever the intention here is more to explore the deeper perspectives and experiences we've had with our relationship to alcohol and to be really honest about where we're at on the journey i am currently seven months on a sober stint i haven't drank in seven months and before that i would do like a few months no alcohol and then I would like drink a little bit and then go back. We basically both have had a very interesting journey through it. And because of it, it's allowed a lot of self-reflection on top of that. We're both, as we said in the first episode, very spiritual people, very conscious, very awake to ourselves. And because of that, it has changed the way we interact with all the things we consume, whether that's alcohol or social media or the news and whatever's on the TV or on your Twitter feed, it changes the way that you look at all those things. So today's conversation is kind of giving us an opportunity to like kind of have our own autopsy on how we feel about these things. Yeah, totally. And for me and my personal journey, I took nine months off of drinking last year and had gone back into moderately drinking like a cocktail here and there at dinner. And I just recently had this whole revelation where I was texting you, right? I was like, I think I kind of want to like give it up again. Like it's not really feeling in alignment anymore. So we're not here to like talk about sobriety. I was still doing like psychedelics (laughs) when I was not drinking. We're not here to talk about sobriety. We're here to talk about the conversation of consumption and how we can add more of a conscious approach to consuming and maybe that does include not drinking so let's start off like how have you felt or what what drew you what drew you to stop drinking was there anything specifically like what really took you to that point yeah well my first experience with sobriety was because I was such a big and still am a big Joe Rogan fan and every year he does something called sober October with him and all his like comedian friends and I was in my senior year of senior year of college for semester 
And I was like, this seems kind of interesting. Like, why not? I'll just try it for fun. It's like a good challenge, you know? Like, I didn't really have it as an intention of, oh, I'm never going to drink again. I was like, well, let's just try Sober October. It seems like a healthy thing to do. So I did it in the context of my senior year. It was like heavy partying. We were going out like three or four nights a week. Everything was dependent and built around drinking. And my friends all thought I was insane. They were saying, like, why would you do this? Like, why does this, that sounds terrible? Like, this doesn't sound any fun. Like, why are you going to throw a wrench in our the fun? The quickest way to lose friends in college. Literally. Go to sober. Be, <laughs> yeah, it's literally to just be like, I think I'm going to not do this. Uh, yeah, it was definitely not the norm at all. Like, I don't think I knew anybody else at that time who just didn't drink. So I didn't drink for a month. For all of October of, uh, of 2018. That was my first experience with sobriety, basically. Obviously, since... Obviously, I was sober as a child, but not (laughs) from when I started drinking to, you know, adulthood. So it was really cool. I loved it. I remember losing a lot of inflammation on my body really quickly. And I hadn't even been working out a lot that month. And I felt like more lean. I just felt better in my body. I just lost like inflammation weight. And I was more productive. Like just the classic things of when you go from extreme you know, party college level drinking to not drinking, all of a sudden your body is like, oh my God, this is like what I feel like normally. There's a fly. There's a fly, sorry. Joining our podcast. (laughs) This is actually giving me PTSD because there was a time in the apartment I used to live in in LA where I had a really bad like fruit fly problem. It wasn't my fault. It was like the drainage pipes in the building. It was disgusting. And I would be podcasting and there would be literally like dozens of flies around me and I would be like on an interview like fucking swatting them away from my face it was so terrible anyways so that was my first experience and then I went back to drinking I was like my senior year did all the things I experienced my first bottomless brunch in LA when I lived in LA for a semester and went back to it and then basically over the next few years to make a long story short every year I would play with a sober October but I would add a month on so in 2019 I did October, November, or like till Thanksgiving. And then the next year, I think I did three months. And then it basically wound up to now in the past year, beginning of 2020 to where we are now in June, 2023, I've spent actually like 90, 95% of the time not drinking. And I would do like a month or two sober. And then I would like have some wine on vacation. And then when I went home, I would go back to not drinking. So now I'm seven months into not drinking and it's something I literally don't, I don't really think about it unless someone is offering me it or it's, you know, in a conversation, but it just became really comfortable for me to not drink. And I just became, I moved further and further away from it because I was figuring out how to have fun without it. That was the biggest thing for me to get over at first was I was very painfully aware of the social anxiety and the social awkwardness that could happen in social settings where everyone else is drinking and you're not. And I really had to figure out how do I build confidence and like be loose and fun from the inside without the help of this. Because I went through a lot of that, it now makes it really easy for me to not drink in most social situations. Yeah. That's like basically where I'm at right now is I'm just, it just doesn't, excite me it's not I just ask my gut really I'm like do I want to drink no okay cool like let's just keep going and that's how I approach it I'm not like I sort of identify as like a sober person but I'm more sober curious and I just find it fascinating and it just also doesn't alcohol just doesn't have a place in my life right now yeah it's really hard to explain when you're tuning into your own energy and working on tapping into that elevated state it's really hard to explain to someone how alcohol doesn't have a positive effect on you anymore, but that's truly what happens. We were talking about this before with like what Dr. G uh, in his podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. I forgot the name of the guy. What's his name? David Manning. Yeah. So he's like the sort of quote unquote founder of Neo emotional release. It's like new age, emotional release work, like healing, emotional healing. Yeah, him. So he was talking about all the different avenues of addiction and how different things that we become addicted to align with different blocked emotions in the body. And that alcohol is actually in alignment with stress and overwhelm. Mm. 
And when you are doing the work of clearing your energy and meditating and really spending time in stillness, those stress levels begin to go down and you're not as overwhelmed anymore. So the alcohol doesn't actually have a positive effect on you Mm -hmm. the same way it would if you were feeling those levels of overwhelm and you actually only feel the depressant effects of it and it just makes you feel like absolute trash so in my life I noticed the complete alignment of when I'm feeling in my power and in that elevated state it's like not even a question I just don't really want alcohol but then as soon as I go back down into like more of maybe a victim mentality or um sorry someone's flying a drone outside and it's distracting me (laughs) when I sense that my my energy is going down again alcohol becomes this thing where I'm like yeah yeah like I'll have a glass here and there and it actually does give me like that perk up of like ooh, like a little buzz and then this like cocktail is like making my night I love this like fancy little flower in it and I'm like out at this nice restaurant and it's like this whole vibe which like can be nice but as soon as you're really working on your energy it's like doesn't really resonate anymore and I have just gotten back to that point so just to fill everyone in I stopped drinking in like December of 2021 and and then I didn't have my first sip of alcohol until my sister's wedding or actually no it was in the backyard of a friend's house um a glass of wine at dinner and it was like in July I think of the next year and then I had a glass of champagne at my sister's wedding And I was really starting to think about like, okay, maybe I'll just have like a celebratory glass if I'm like at a big event or something where it feels like celebratory. And then it kind of slid into, oh, like what about just like a glass at dinner? And I really had this mindset of like, you know, moderation, I feel like is totally fine, which for some people I feel like it can be. Yeah. But I have this tendency of when I... And I feel like a lot of people can probably relate to this if they listen and really check in with themselves. I have this tendency when I'm feeling like the slightest bit of discomfort to get excited about like going to a dinner and having a cocktail. And then all of a sudden that discomfort, I don't have to deal with it. It's Mm. like whatever sense of stress I was feeling for that day gets kind of overtaken by the cocktail or like you think it's, it's like alleviating it. Yes. And it totally is because during those however many months when I wasn't drinking, the greatest realization I had was that I was no longer, um, and I wasn't even like, I don't even drink that much. So this is just how much it affects us. Like even the moderate drinking I find still affects me Mm -hmm. because in times where you would be confronting an emotion and allowing it to be seen and felt and maybe transcend that emotion, you're actually numbing it to the point where you're elongating the process of like stepping into your power. Yeah, uh, that resonates with me a lot because I'm very tapped in to myself. I'm very aware of myself and my body and my emotions. Here's the thing that brings a nuance into this conversation is I have people in my life who are very near and dear to me who are amazing and wonderful and I can consider them very high vibrational people and they drink regularly Yeah, and they love it and everyone's different so this is why it's so interesting because it's like there's no one size fits all and while I want to project my sense of peace and happiness onto someone I love to say well I'm really happy because I don't drink so I think you will be really happy not drinking I don't know if that's I I just it's hard to do that even though we can look at the science of alcohol and pretty point blank be like yeah it's basically poison for your body However, you can argue, you know, there are other things in our life that are also not good for us, but, you know, we eat food every day that has additives in it that are inflammatory to us, like for us. And we live in, we have Wi-Fi on all night and it's like not great for your body. Like there's all these different things that you can basically go down the path of. It's not to say to excuse all the bad things. It's more to understand that we all kind of pick our battles and I just can very I just have a lot of examples of people I know where they are pretty tuned into themselves and they know that right now what works for them is to drink and enjoy beer and to have it after work and to like bond with coworkers with drinking and it just works for them and then maybe in a few years 
they'll step into their era of ultimate health and self-care. Yeah, I like to see it as seasons too. I think that's something that can help you experiment with it too. I notice in my life there are chapters in my life where I have to be more in tune with like my highest energy. Like I actually feel as if I just entered into one of these chapters. We're starting this podcast. Um, I'm kind of expanding with what I'm going to do in my business. And it feels like a chapter where I really want to be tuned in. And it kind of isn't even a question of like, what should I do to do that? I know how Mm. to do that. So I feel like it's just also thinking about what are my needs in my life right now? And what kind of chapter am I in? Am I in the chapter of like traveling to Europe and laying by a pool and relaxing and drinking Aperol spritz with my husband, right? Or am I in a chapter of creating something really special in my business where I have to, or I get to be in tune with this like higher frequency and to know what affects you personally. Like this is the main message I want to get across is that everyone is different and everyone has different levels of sensitivity, but it doesn't hurt to test things out in your yeah, life. Right? For sure. And that's the thing is it's all, a, it is all a game of self inquiry and self discovery. Like what? Oh, spider, huge spider in the wall. It's not too big. It could, be, still in it could be a way. scorpion. No, I mean, it's red. That's it's red. red. Is that not red or is that the looks, angle? Of it looks brown to me. Okay. Just keep an eye on that in yeah. case it falls, falls near me. Yeah. Oh, well. It's all a game of knowing yourself. That is how you avoid becoming dogmatic in your practices and your habits and your decision making about what to do, what not to do. Because that's the thing. I My way of living and my philosophy on life might not work for somebody else. And that's the nuance of why you have to get into that habit of checking in with yourself. What does it actually mean to feel your emotion and to sit there and ask yourself, how am I actually feeling right now? What is the feeling in my body? What is the feeling in my gut? What is the vision that I have for myself? And can I align to that? And that's how you know whether something works for you. And I, what, what becomes concerning in the like spiritual world So whatever you want to call it of where we have these like beautiful ideas, but then we turn them into like a religion almost where then it's like, oh, you're not part of our gang if you're doing this thing. And then that can happen with alcohol, too, where people are so narrow about it that we're not respecting that everyone is on their own path. and Everyone's figuring things out as they go. One a person that I. So I have shared that Alan Watts is my favorite writer. I listen to so many of his lectures and he's so inspiring to me. He drank really, really heavily because he actually felt a lot of pressure build from how well known his work had become even in his own lifetime. Like today it's astronomically even bigger and he wanted to find a way to carry his work to a lot of people. But the point is at the time he was doing a lot of lectures and like speeches if you will and just sharing about eastern philosophy but he felt a lot of pressure from like keeping up the teachings that he drank a lot and people report how he was like almost an alcoholic i didn't know that yeah and it's crazy to know that to know that and then know who you think alan watts is and you listen to his lectures and he's so awakened and he's so high vibrational when i listen to him i get inspired and i feel uplifted but I found out that in his later in his life, he died really young. He died when he was like, I don't even 60, I think. And he wasn't like very healthy in terms of how much he drank. Was he happy? Like, was he, he was, truly at peace? I think he st- like struggled because he was so intelligent and able to explain these concepts and the way that we are in awe of his ideas today, people were also in awe of them back then in like the 60s and 70s when it was really popular. I think I'm getting that timeline correct. That I I need to read my next book. I want to read by him is his like autobiography. I think he talks about this in it, but what I've gathered so far is he was kind of in this happy place, but then he was like working a lot and sharing it so much that he had trouble. He, I don't know how to explain it. I think I don't want to, I don't want to like put words in his mouth and he's passed away and I want to like honor all that. But I know the point is 
I think he was imperfect as a human being, as we all are, and struggled with turning to alcohol to help numb some of the intense, overwhelming, and like maybe stressful feelings he had from the work he did. But nonetheless, he is so powerful and so empowering and smart and so awakened. And he has probably awakened like at least a million people, if not way, way more with his words and his work. So to me, I look at that as an example of not judging people because they do something that you don't do for yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I think the way that I see it in my own personal journey is like, your life ebbs and flows with these highs and lows and you have these chapters in your life that are like filled with challenge and hardship and maybe they're lighter and then sometimes maybe they're heavier but I view those times in your life as super essential for your evolution because you're in the dirt of what you're meant to learn about yourself in order to reach that next level and I like to view life this way because when you're feeling discomfort and challenge you get to like really ask yourself okay like how is this chapter here to serve me and what can I learn from it but I find in my own journey and I'll speak for myself that when you add alcohol into the mix of being in one of those challenging parts of your life and then drinking Mm -hmm. it can elongate how much time you spend down there Because you're not actually in tune with the feelings that are there to share the messages with you and help you navigate yourself through that. Because the feelings that are there to help you feel uncomfortable to feel. And you want to just go go over it, uh, get get rid of it. And they're actually there to help you. Yes. And I actually learned about something super interesting through Edgar Tolle the two different levels of unconsciousness. So there's this first level of unconsciousness where you just kind of like believe every thought that you think in your head and you identify with every single activity of the mind. And based on like the programs of your mind, you could have this like subtle background buzzing of anxiety if you are just believing all of like those tiny fear-based thoughts. And he was saying the reason why people will, most of society drinks is because I mean, he was saying that alcohol is a way to numb out that static when you're just unconsciously believing every thought that you have. And then the next level of unconsciousness is deep unconsciousness where you're going through the challenge and you're dealing with hardship and emotions and the thoughts you're having are even darker. And then you're identifying with those and it's bringing you into a deeper place of darkness. And then addiction is like bound to happen because you're just like trying to get out of that wait can you recap those levels because it's really interesting yeah so there's two levels of unconsciousness regular unconsciousness and then deep unconsciousness regular unconsciousness is what a majority of people are living in and what's the sorry what's the difference between unconscious versus subconscious well those are okay so i'm asking more to clarify for anyone like listening because those two words are interchangeable in the sense of the mind yeah like the conscious mind and the subconscious mind or the conscious mind and the the unconscious unconscious. mind. But worth talking about unconsciousness in the terms of like the spiritual sense of raising your conscious and being able to observe yourself from that observer's perspective. Like almost being on autopilot. Yes. And not being thoughtful about what you're doing. Yeah. Identifying as the ego mind as opposed to like the soul self. So it connects so beautifully to this conversation because he talked about these two levels of unconsciousness and how coping mechanisms can come into play in order to really cure ourselves from that buzzing but it's an illusion so let me backtrack with the first level of unconsciousness you're having a thought and you're automatically believing it it's like no questions asked every thought that comes in your mind you believe it It is reality yeah like this means who you are it's like defines your day like it's right that's fact and when people are living at that state of unconsciousness, there's this subtle sense of unease that feels like a background static, which is how I lived for ever up until going on this path and like learning about all of these things. And he was saying that as humans, we don't even understand that there's a way to alleviate that through like accessing peace and all of these other m- tools. 
So we unconsciously try to tune down the static the only way we know we can through things in our external, like having a drink. Mm -hmm. Because in the moment, it actually does alleviate you you from that. Like the the peace or alleviation you're feeling is, for all intents and purposes, real. Yes, but then you pay for it because then you feel like shit and you're perpetuating living out of alignment right and and not doing anything about it and then you don't even get the data on the fact that you're unaligned because you're numbing every time it comes up right and it's so unconscious so this is why i want to talk about this so openly because it's no one's fault that this is the way we have learned to deal with things in society right like alcohol is everywhere and it's not to say we all need to go sober but just get curious Mm. Like really start getting curious about how you can tune out the the static from the inside out as opposed to the outside in. That is so interesting. Yeah. That's such a more nuanced and personalized way to think about it instead of just hearing alcohol is bad for you and you're also a bad person if you drink and you fucking numb yourself. It's more like, all right. We're human beings on this path. We get ourselves into unaligned states sometimes, or we have traumas that we're dealing with, or we have a we're legitimately going through a hard time because that's life. And then switching to the curious mode is such a powerful shift of like the opportunity to just asking yourself, why am I doing this thing? Why am I scrolling on Instagram right now? Why am I, you know, going to this why am I cooking this meal every day? <laughs> like just little things of how are the external aspects of your life? What's your what's your relationship to them beyond just the fact that it's a habit right. that you do and that you think it makes you feel good, but it's like, does it really make you feel good? Because a lot of these things do make you feel good in the moment. Yeah, and I like think that's what's hard. We can people are like, I do feel good. What do you mean? I am happy. Yeah, I'm like my time. Like TikTok soothes me to bed. <laughs> I right? yeah like, yeah. It probably does. It's a straight dopamine hit to your system. Yeah. And uh, trust me, we're not sitting here saying like, we don't scroll on TikTok. That's that's Pinterest for me. Is my like, it's like an algorithmic vision board. Wait, you you doom scroll on Pinterest? Well, it's not, it doesn't ever feel doomful. I love it. (laughs) I was, I, now that I've been off of Instagram for, I'm doing a 30 day hiatus. I'm basically in the middle of it. I, where I would be turning to like mindless scrolling on Instagram, I scroll on Pinterest and I on my home page and I love it. It is I don't know anyone on it. It's not social. Like it's not like I'm interacting with people. It's all perfectly curated images to my vision boards, which are all the board like an out of our minds board that Wait, I made. This is a like a wedding. manifestation Dude, technique. Yes, it is. And I if I'm gonna be scrolling on my phone before I go to sleep, which I know that I shouldn't, but I do it sometimes. I scroll on Pinterest because then I go to sleep thinking about like I've had a wedding Pinterest board for years and I'm so excited. I'm not even engaged. I'm looking forward to that. Alana, I have a if you're listening to this, <laughs> go on my Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so, but anyways, sorry to interrupt. It was more just, yeah, there's like real things that it actually might be making you feel good, even though yes, in theory, bird's eye view, like this thing equals bad. But we need to understand the nuance of it so that we can actually figure out if it's a problem and how do we fix it? How do we address it? Also so that we're not always like looking at ourselves like these un like these projects that are never done and you're healing all the time and you suck. It's like it's like it's okay, it's fine. Like listen, there are things, as long as you're aware of them and you know you're you're inquisitive and curious about your habits, I think you're on the right in the right direction. But I, yeah, I fucking love Pinterest and I'm a big fan. If you're going to be scrolling at night, go on Pinterest after you've made your boards and stuff. It is magical. I love I'll it. have to try that. It's <laughs> pure good vibes. It's pure vibes. Other than blue light. That's, you know. Do you wear the blue light glasses? I try, but not always. I don't even own a pair. I need to get a pair of those. Um, <laughs> what are we going to say? I feel like with consumption of anything, it is being conscious when you are consuming anything, I feel like is the key. Yeah. Because if you can tune in 
and just become aware of the way that you're feeling prior to engaging with something, you get to choose as opposed to living on the autopilot. And I think the coolest thing about experimenting with these hiatuses of whatever thing you are consuming, it allows you to really see what happens without that thing there. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe we could go into a conversation on that. For you, what do you feel like has happened to you without the Instagram? Has anything occurred? I mean, I... I feel like I've ge- generally maintained a good relationship with Instagram and social media, but I know that occasionally I've just sort of excused it. What I mean is it is very hard to not have an Instagram slash scrolling addiction. Okay. These apps, they know what they're doing. These algorithms are intent are intentionally showing you content to keep you on there. Like, I am very self-aware and in touch with myself and I was addicted to social media and and addicted to Instagram. Like it, it just, it was, I have noticed just in these two weeks when I like sit on the toilet or I'm like waiting for food or whatever, those like in between life periods, I'm realizing I would have gone on Instagram right now and started scrolling. And just that awareness of knowing that this is how I was using it and filling random moments of time with it made me just think about, okay, how do I feel about that? Is that really serving me? And so now I'm, I have this like, I almost view it as I have this percentage of time in my life that I've gotten back and that I get to be way more intentional about. So the amount of time I've spent on social media, I've been still on like TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube, but my relationship with those is not at all what it was with Instagram. And I think we could get into like the nuances of how Instagram is like a very strange place right now, but I definitely have had that exact awareness open up of realizing the amount that I was using it and why I was using it. And that if I was even sad at home or lonely or whatever, like just middle of the week on a Tuesday and I'm bored, I would just open up Instagram and just fill my brain with whatever was on my feed. And I just realized that that's probably not great. And so now I just am so much more aware of the times when I'm sitting kind of on the couch doing nothing and I, feel the the pull to fill it with something to fill the void instead of just maybe just sitting there and actually doing nothing or maybe reading is a better thing to fill my time with and that feels a bit softer on my like dopamine hormones or whatever my dopamine hormones wow i just mean dopamine (laughs) (laughs) oh wow we just had a first snort i snort when i laugh sometimes if you really hit a good joke anyways so, yeah, it's definitely been positive. Like, I just, it just l- helps me realize how much I was relying on it. And I think the same thing happens whether you're doing an alcohol hiatus or uh, or whatever other type of hiatus makes sense for you, is you just suddenly realize how much it was part of your life. And then y- you get to ask yourself, is this really, was this really good for me? Was it actually benefiting me? What parts of it do I actually like? Like, I actually miss seeing my friends updates on there. And now it means I have to work a little harder to be in touch with people. Maybe that's a good thing. And it's not, you know, I shouldn't just rely on people showing images of their life and me being like, great, I'm, I'm up to date with Jenny. You know, I, I should actually reach out and like put effort into maintaining friendships, not just on social media. So there's a lot of things that I've realized with it. And this, it's only been like two weeks. It's like nothing. And I've just realized like, wow, I definitely was doom scrolling. Every day on Instagram. And I'm like, like what? Like, I just should not be doing that. And like what becomes available to us in that stillness too? Because another aspect of this is imagine the two different paths that someone's life can go down with them having just a little bit more stillness in their life versus yeah. filling all the stillness with, let's say, scrolling, for example, it's like our intuition is always speaking to us, yes. always guiding us. Yes. And that's when you get your downloads and really think about this. Every single time you have the biggest revelation, it's like in the shower, when you're driving, when you're on a walk. In it's the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. <laughs> Me, <laughs> da- like downloading an entire video script and just ha- half asleep groggily writing it down because I'm like, <laughs> fuck, I got to write this one down. It's really powerful. Yeah, it's in stillness. It's in stillness. Yeah. It's not when yeah. you're searching for the answers. Yes, so it's like, rare. 
that's where though you for me i think this also really depends on uh your human human design type too this they talk about where you get ideas from oh what was mine bella's trying to get me into this human yeah design. i think we i'm an both, astrology girly i think we both have this thing where i'll just speak to mine because i don't remember yours but i think it's similar where my like crown chakra or whatever is undefined meaning it's open which means that i actually get legitimate inspiration from other people so as it relates to this conversation i legitimately get inspired when i'm consciously consuming something so for me that'll be a youtube video a lecture of alan watts when i listen to alan watts lectures it like i'm like matching that vibration it makes me have all these realizations about eastern philosophy and consciousness and awareness and karma and whatever it is that actually legitimately inspires me and i think that's part of knowing how it works for me versus i it's harder to get inspired like that for me on instagram because i don't know the energy is different the intention is not there versus on youtube i'm picking a video to put my time into be like i want to learn about this or i want to enjoy this vlog i've sat i've clicked it and i've sat back to watch it versus like the endless scroll of another thing another thing another thing like that's not really inspiring to me but i actually get legitimate inspiration from watching picking a youtube video or a lecture or reading a book that actually plops me into like an interesting creative vibration that then i can pause the video and come up with my own thing to share because everything is a vibration and i think this is what is super super important to keep top of mind with social media when you are plugging into someone whether it be alan watts or stalking an influencer yeah you are plugging into their frequency and their energy and you're creating an energetic cord Mm -hmm. and it's really important to be super mindful about how many of those cords you're creating and to whom and who are you giving your energy to and whose energy are you taking do you want to be even taking that energy because it all really impacts you and i freaking love reality tv (laughs) But boy, does that shit impact me. (laughs) (laughs) Guilty. (laughs) And I have to be super mindful to have this uh, view of it, of it just being entertainment because of how sensitive I am and how easily I can start reading people's energy. I find myself almost like plugging into certain reality stars energy and like doing readings on them as I'm like watching the show. And I find entertainment in that because this is something that I like really love to do. And I love to like, I won't go down this rabbit hole, but (laughs) yeah, everything is an energetic cord. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about that is it doesn't, we don't have to, we don't, the middle way of life is that we don't necessarily have to cut out all the things that we've labeled as bad. If we're aware of them, I could, I could be, someone could argue against this, but for example, you watching reality TV, you're aware that you tap in to other people's energy really easily. You're an empath, like whatever that experience is, experience is for you you're aware of it so then you like coach yourself almost through listen this is just entertainment we're gonna cut the cord after this i'm gonna cleanse myself of this yes. person i've taken on conscious consumption that's which what I is exactly yes and that means if there are things that you know you like want to spend time doing or people there's things in your life that you can't necessarily cut out like family that you don't vibe with but their family and you think the right thing to do is spend time with them, but they kind of drain you. We don't need to go completely cold turkey and cutthroat everyone out of our life. Maybe that does make sense for you, but maybe it doesn't. And so you turn on the higher level of consciousness to know that it's okay to be in this situation because you are in charge of your experience and you you can do things to cut the energetic cord or group yourself after or book yourself a spa treatment the weekend after you have a family you reunion because you know you need to ground again that's living i think the middle way of not living an extreme of being like i'm spiritual now so i don't do any of this shit and usually it's that judgment that actually is the thing that's affecting the most yes if you're like judging your family or judging other people or the thing that you're engaging in or like how we were saying when you like walk into a bar and all of a sudden you're like judging like i, I found myself Okay, the other day I went to a concert at Red Rocks and it was like a reggae band and everyone was blackout drunk. And 
I found myself judging how many drunk people were there. Mm. And it wasn't actually the drunk people that were affecting me. It was my judgment yeah. of them. Do you know where, where I wonder, you know, how those, those vibrational charts of like low vibe, high vibe. Yeah. I wonder if where judgment falls on that. Oh, it's low. It's low, it's low for sure. But I'm just curious because what's interesting is you can become identifying yourself as I'm spiritually awakened, spiritually awakened. But then if you, that can result in inflating your ego and then judging other people, which like is not high vibrational living. Yeah, no, you definitely should. It, th- okay, this is like, I remember learning about this too. It's like, this is a really, oh, it's almost an essential part of this journey of like turning inwards and getting to know yourself is an expansion of the ego. Yeah. And then you have to like go through another ego death <laughs> yeah. after your ego has like gone and then so you get, big. Yeah, and then you get to like be friends with your ego and know that it's like, yeah. all right, it's not like you're demolishing them. You're just like, hey, I'm aware that you're here, but can we calm down for a second? Right. And when I first, that like first round of me, like stepping away from alcohol, I was on such a fucking high horse. And then after I went through that phase, I I really had to understand. I went through a whole part of my journey of like respecting everyone else's path. Mm-hmm. And like how you mentioned before, I don't, judgment is lethal. It is lethal. It, it really is. It is. feels terrible. It I, it's, it feels gross. But I hate, it's, it's like, it's you're part of like our human nature that yeah. we get to transcend and dissolve and it's okay if we yeah. find ourselves doing it. And it also sometimes serves actually a good purpose. Like we need discernment. We need, maybe there's different kinds of judgment because there's the judgment of being like, oh, like, why would you do that? Like, what's wrong with you? That's like just, that's like petty judgment. Well, everything's a mirror too. We could go into a whole conversation on that. But then there also is, as a human being, you have a right to discern, you know, who you want to hang out with and what works for you, what's in alignment, what's not. And that's where you use your judgment in the positive sense to, it can be like, it's like a survival thing too. Like you walk into a room and you just don't feel good to be there. And you're using your judgment, your discernment, or you meet someone and you're just like, "Mm, they're not my vibe. Someone could be like, well, you're judging them. It's like, no, I'm just using my discernment. You know what I think it is? Judgment without, judgment with some sort of emotional charge is just a projection. Like when you're judging someone and there's an emotional charge, like for example, me at Red Rocks, maybe judging the drunk people, that was a a projection Mm. of maybe me thinking to myself about me drinking, right? Like mm-hmm. there was a, there was a judgment that was charged with some sort of emotion. But when you're looking at something and you're able to pick up on certain things and make a judgment of it without what's another what's a better word that I'm looking for? For which version of judgment? Like, judgment that's for your highest good like discernment discernment i guess but when you're able to look at something without that emotional charge and it doesn't actually impact you or bring you down to a lower vibration yeah it's more like matter uh, yeah you're able to just like draw a conclusion about something without i think that's probably discernment yeah but i just yeah i think again with some of these emotions we feel we try to categorize them as good and bad which sometimes takes away from understanding their purpose, which is if you're just like, I'm going to avoid judging people at all costs, but you don't understand maybe what is causing the judgment or the type of judgment that it is, you actually might lose out on the valuable information you get from the experience of judging someone. (laughs) Does that make sense? Well, yeah, you learn about yourself and what you judge most about yourself. Or like maybe in a certain stage of your life, you figuring out what isn't aligned for you comes out as judgment and you like look you like reflect it back to yourself to learn about what you are judging in yourself to then figure out oh it's because I'm living out of alignment or because I'm doing this thing because I think 
that I should, but I don't actually want to. Therefore, I judge myself on it. And when I see someone else, they're a mirror for me and I judge, my, I judge them. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But with the alcohol, it's interesting. M- my view of it is definitely evolving. Yeah. Like, I remember talking to someone who, I'm going to say it right, it was my coach. <laughs> One. <laughs> Nikki and I are counting. We have people in our lives that we really, they have um, taught us a lot. Are inspired by, or they teach us things, or they expand us. And we both mention them a lot to each <laughs> other. And so we made, Nikki made fun of me earlier for mentioning one of my favorite creators so many times. And I s- bought, I bit right back and I said, I'm going to tell you the amount of times you mentioned your fucking coach. So take that. <laughs> Case closed. I forget what I was even going to say now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, consumption. Yeah. The conscious level of consumption. Yeah. And where it becomes unconscious and is when we're not realizing we're seeking for something to give us a sense of peace or some sort of emotion that can actually be achieved through the internal. Yes. That is the deeper avenue of realization that I think is why... Yeah, the whole point is to realize how much of your happiness is made up of things that are we can qualify as external. Yeah. And that's a huge indicator of kind of like where your baseline is, of how much you need outside of yourself to feel stimulated and happy and at peace versus how often are you consciously creating those experiences like from within, which there's some nuance there because, you know, being in a relationship with someone is a huge cause of happiness and is amazing for your health and community is wonderful. And maybe you could be like, well, those people are outside of you. So like if you're always relying on people, you're going to be miserable. And people make that excuse to never commit to anyone. They're like, oh, you're setting yourself up for, you know, disappointment if you put your faith in someone. And so I, I kind of, yeah, if you're depending on them yeah, for well happiness and love as opposed to being your own source while also giving and receiving. Yeah, so that's where the difference is in a relationship when people are coming to it almost from like empty cups and looking for the other person to fill it versus the fulfillment in friendships or relationships when you are coming as your whole full self is like astronomically different. And this is something I noticed in myself because I – like I've had phases of my relationship where I am like scared of how much I love my partner <laughs> to where I'm like, this person is literally not real. And I'm so in love with them that I'm like, is this a problem? <laughs> and as over the years, as I've like gained more confidence and like gone through my spiritual awakening and like realized that I have all this power within me to like be happy, fulfilled and confident that actually, yes, I'm like still very much the same, if not even more like growing the love for my partner, but the fear the goes dynam- away. The fear goes yes. away. I, here's the thing. Realistically. Yes. My biggest fear would still be that like the people I love die. I don't know if I would recover. Like I, I am, it's hard to not be afraid of your loved ones dying. Like it sounds, it, that's tough. I don't know how I got a few more steps to go before I get to like releasing that fear. But in a day to day sense, like I'm coming to the relationship so much more full yeah, and not looking for my partner to provide me with like love and approval. And I've seen it play out in really interesting ways where even my own confidence of like my own beauty, like I became more confident and like less insecure with myself. And he literally would like actually speak more and compliment me more in a way of how I looked that day. And I wasn't asking for it. But when I was like needing it and wanting it, I felt like I wasn't getting it. And when I gave it to myself, I swear it was like, he was like, wow, you are like, you're looking so stunning today or whatever. Not that he didn't come to me before, but your reality will reflect what you feel within. Exactly. And when you're in that more lack. Pretty fast too. Yes. Really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. As quickly as you want it to. Yeah. So yeah, it's just 
interesting the parallel of looking outside yourself for things and that nuance of you know you can still feel immense joy from going to concerts and listening to music and watching movies and connecting with people you know and and having experiences that are not just created from within you through meditation, visualization, journaling, whatever, all sorts of things, spending time in nature, you can still have those. And they actually are going to be 10 times more fulfilling when you already are from this full cup. Right. And to check in, uh, yeah. where's my cup at before I'm diving into this? Am I looking for my cup to become more filled from this thing? Right. Because then that can show you a lot, Right. Yeah, just to simply ask that question and it's tough because when you're so deep in the cycles of overconsumption of something, it's hard to even know what it feels like to be in tune with yourself or to even feel full from within. Yeah, like it. I almost feel like now that I had this experience of not drinking for however seven, eight months, whatever that was, I felt how you could really feel all this from within. Like you have to almost make the effort to actually experience that of like, holy shit, I feel happiness from within. I feel peace from within. And then once you feel that, you understand, okay, let me check in with myself. Am I looking to make myself feel a certain way from this external thing. But like, it does take, I feel like a little intention and effort to like really. Yes. Cultivate that. That's why I made this YouTube video about my experience with sobriety. And a big theme of it was saying how if I, let's say I am going to put, you know, basically try to convince someone to be sober. Let's say that that's like the con the, context there is which we've both attested to this insane level of realization that comes from actually pushing yourself to not drink for so long that you you're just getting you're filling the bucket that says i'm having all these life experiences raw like i am just as i am experiencing all of this i'm literally raw dogging life and it's amazing and i feel my emotions and i feel the grief and the sadness that is part of life but i also feel the heights of joy and ecstasy and beauty and gratitude and i literally made those by myself that's what happens when you take on the challenge of saying let's look at this like a really cool quest that i'm on to prove to myself that I'm the common denominator in every situation that I feel good in. That was like the theme of the videos to be like, my argument is yes, you can have fun and feel good with alcohol. I think that's an, that's obvious, but what if you proved to yourself that you can have all the things you're looking for f- without the assistance of this substance that kind of has a pretty big drawback to it for your health and your you know, mental health and whatever it is. And that's, I think, where I totally would recommend to someone to explore long passages of not drinking because it just gives you so many fascinating things to look at with yourself and it gives you the opportunity to cultivate like true baseline peace and like happiness. Not even, it's not even that you're happy all the time. It's like, it's just, being peaceful and being like chill in most scenarios. That's amazing for life to like consider that most of the time you're like pretty good because you're like, you know what to do to create that feeling of feeling okay and not having to numb it. Right. And the clarity too. Like if you're lacking clarity in your life, the number one thing you can do is probably step away from alcohol and like really see stillness. So I feel like I'm going into the summer with the perspective of like, I'm really looking for clarity and vitality, which is why I'm like so ready to experiment with this again. Mm -hmm. And it'll give you that clarity real quick. But this is the thing also, you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Like you really do. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to go to, I remember I was going to weddings and not drinking and 
there was one wedding where my husband was in um not the bridal party oh my god the grooms the groomsman he was a groomsman what do they call it? is that a bridal party yeah it's a bridal party wedding party wedding party same thing um <laughs> So he was like out taking all the photos and I didn't really know anyone there. And I like had to go to the welcome party by myself and I didn't drink and it was uncomfortable. Yeah. And I was like raw dog. Yeah, just raw dog in the wedding. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> it makes sense though. And um, I remember I asked the bartender, like, can you make me a mocktail? And he made me this like beautiful, fancy mocktail. And it was in that moment where I had to really sit with that discomfort. And there's, so much magic that happens when you sit through discomfort and like really just you're you're with it and just be with it yeah and And you survived it it ended it was temporary yes and then you get through that and you access like this level of authenticity that feels so good yeah and once you can get past that hump and like really breathe into your body and be in your body that's where you access clarity authenticity joy peace and it's real and it yeah fuels you yeah i can totally attest to the discomfort being super fucking real because i i moved to a new town basically last year and i was in social situations that were so fucking unaligned (laughs) and i was with people like i was basically scenarios where the only people i was hanging out with were just it was just like who I happened to know. Like I just didn't have that much. I didn't take that much. I didn't really create the situations. I was just like, okay, I, I want to be social. This is all that there is for now. Point is, I was like at bars and like places that everyone was so fucked up. They looked like they were having a great time. For all I knew, they were like living their dreams. Okay. But I was sitting there standing there so uncomfortable and so like I don't fucking want to be here I hate this I don't know what to do I know that I'm not in a good time I'm a generator other people are picking up on my energy I'm ruining this night for my boyfriend like it was so uncomfortable and I was like oh like it was not fun to be in that scenario and to know like if I just had a shot I would probably loosen the fuck up and it would be all be fine but I knew that I was like Bella you're gonna survive this you're gonna be home in a matter of hours it's gonna be fine And then you're going to be glad that you didn't give in and numb an unaligned situation because that was like the final straw for me that finally brought me to a really low point of having a lack of community in this town that I live in. It's a random town in Texas, a story for another time. And I was like really, I was like crying and upset and just like at such a low point of being like, I don't have I don't have anyone around me who likes what I like. I don't want to drink. I don't want to party. I'm fucking over it right now. It doesn't work for this season. And that low point was what finally had me be like, you know what? I'm taking my power back. I felt the feels. I let it out. I called a friend. Like I ranted. I did all the things. And then I was like, I'm going to create this community. I'm going to somehow find the women who also don't resonate with going out to bars right now and they prefer to have a fucking tea party in my backyard. I'm going to find those fucking people. And I've told you this in a matter of months, it has turned around where I literally suddenly have like an amazing group of women where I live. And I'm like about to put on these little like events in my backyard for them. And it was because I stayed authentic to, I don't want to drink. It doesn't have a place in my life right now. It doesn't feel good. I know my gut intuition doesn't want me to do this. And I feel so uncomfortable uncomfortable right now. And I, like, I had a bad night. I was not fun. I wasn't my highest self. I didn't show these people who I really am. It was just, like, all on all accounts, shitty. <laughs> but I'm glad that I let it be shitty. And I let myself feel all that shit by being sober and actually feeling it and having no escape from it. Because now I'm even more rooted in what I know is aligned for me. Yeah, and and if you went back to that situation, you learn how to be your true self in those situations without the contraction. Yes, and now because I've pushed myself to find community and create community, I I could go out with these people probably and be so much more fun because I'm coming from a full cup of I pushed through to find the alignment and to create the community that then if I do go out, I'm going to be way better of a good time. Because right. I have like 
gone to the depths of figuring out what is aligned for me and what makes sense for me to consume and not consume. Beautiful. You literally manifested friends. I really felt like doing that. No, that was cool. I remember you <laughs> called yeah, me and you told crazy. me that story of like, you're never going to believe this. Yeah. I just manifested all these friends because you had expressed to me how lonely was you felt. really lonely. Yeah. And like, that's also the hard truth about when you really make the conscious effort to be authentic and honor yourself, like it can get lonely. There's a period where you're like, oh my God, none of this around me is working right now. Like I, it just feels like everything is crumbling. But I really think that that's a very key part of it. Oh yeah, that's what happens. That's everything what happens. falls apart. It everything has falls to. falls apart. It has to for you to be pushed to the point of doing something about it. Or for s- new things to come into your life. Yeah. It is, if I was going to say, usually, if not always, there's a massive falling apart that happens before someone has like their biggest breakthrough or like a manifestation yes. comes through. Yeah. Actually, my coach, Jenny. <laughs> Shout out, Jenny. Shout Jenny out, Jenny. Was Jenny was actually just here today. <laughs> Jenny Adishian is an incredible fucking person. She just came over today with her boyfriend, Parker. She's been my mentor for years and is also now one of my best friends. Anyways, she's a manifestation expert and she actually talks. She has like a few like concrete methods that she's written out about manifestation and like the path. One of them she calls the crumbling is where you're on this path. You have the vision. You get excited about it. You start to take action. And then all of a sudden things feel like they're falling apart and like, Things are not working out and you're just like, what the fuck? Like, I thought that this was all supposed to be dandy and amazing. And then after you hold the vision through that, the thing comes through. Yeah. You like have to almost prove to your subconscious. Like, it's like that last push of like, what do you truly believe? Yeah. Are you going to maintain this perspective? Yeah. Hold the vision. (laughs) Hold it tight. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but then also let it go and know it's going to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, don't hold it back. <laughs> Edit that out. Edit Wait, that just out. kidding. Don't don't <laughs> grasp onto the vision. Don't do that. Non-attachment. Yeah, but no, it's it's true. Being so aware of your consumption just completely changes your relationship to the world around you. And it's really powerful to just put that higher level of consciousness into play and know that you... Just choose the empowerment stance, like, n- and know that there's nothing perfect. And it's like that. This is what this whole game of life is about: is we are presented with these, all these amazing opportunities to figure out what works, what doesn't work. How do we take care of ourselves better so we can do the things that are like probably not the best, but we have fun doing them anyway? And how do we take care of ourselves? Be gentle on yourself too. This is a something I'm really, really integrating into my own journey. Is that non-judgment towards self when you're experimenting with life and to be easy on yourself and just to start, start to observe your tendencies and separate yourself from that being who you concretely are and just get curious of like, Ooh, like when I'm feeling stressed in life, what do I tend to lean into? Because that right there is a habit and it's a habit loop that becomes ingrained into your patterns and soon enough your life and then your reality is created off that action. So just start to kind of become aware and curious, like start to get curious about what your patterns are with consumption in general and really just tune into your tendencies. And I said this in the first episode that one of the things that I noticed with myself of like when I'm out of alignment is when a lot of these things that I consume are like at their max. Like I find myself scrolling on TikTok for way too long. Mm -hmm. It is just such a telltale sign that I'm running from something in my mind that just wants to be addressed and underneath addressing that and observing it and transcending it is where your power really lies. So I just get curious, non-judgment, curiosity, just see how good it gets mm-hmm. that's i remember that was the approach i took towards giving up alcohol i was like let me just like yeah. see how good it gets like yeah we always are like it's gonna be terrible like everything's gonna suck it's like no what if we're this is like the, i love when i see these videos people are like mel, mel robbins always does this she's like what if it all works out what if it all works out? what if it's all perfect five second rule what if it's all what if it gets amazing <laughs> she doesn't have a be delirious accent, does she 
She does have a southern. Does she? Did I just do a southern accent? She has. She doesn't have a southern accent, but she definitely Maybe has some slightly. sort of twang. I don't know. Deliriousness works. Delusion is really good in these cases. Um, I highly recommend. Yeah, delusion. look towards the positives. What What are you gaining? And like, hopefully, from this episode, you could hear what you gain. It's like clarity, connection to your intuition, wisdom on yeah, like better the direction, community. community, connection, like real connection, and and to be okay with people judging you because that's yeah. it's bound to happen. It's inevitable. It's, it's literally it's like okay. Honestly, I think the more you put yourself in situations that you're aware of the fact that someone could misinterpret or judge you, I actually think that's so good for you because then you start to be like, this is a fact of life. Why the fuck am I going to worry about it? Like the only, like you just get better at it by practicing being uncomfortable and being like, oh yeah, I'm not going to control anybody's perception of me. Like uh, moving on. (laughs) We should actually do an episode on not giving an F what people think of you. I would love to do that also because I actually think that I could do it even more. I think we all could. Yeah. But I've definitely, in terms of like, I've definitely learned a lot about that over my, just my podcast journey really helped with that. And just like losing friends through big life situations, all sorts of things. It's definitely like a really interesting thing to, to like learn and understand. And then speaking to like the subconscious part of it, rewiring that it's such a social, it's so built in for us to want to be accepted. It's, it's very normal. It's like built into our DNA. Yeah. Tribe mentality. Yeah. But it also really backfires on you and makes you live life according to someone else's plan. Yeah. Which you know how that goes. We know not that you will be fucked. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um, amazing. Well, do you have anything else to add? I don't think so. The loop feels pretty closed. Wait, but let me think, because I feel like there is something else. No, there's not. Okay, (laughs) wonderful. (laughs) All right, then. Um, Well, amazing. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Crazy, this is only our second episode. I feel like we're on fire already. (laughs) We're on a roll. (laughs) We're on a roll. So, yeah, thank you guys for listening. We we will see you in the next one. And, yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. (laughs)